Hello, I'm Rhonda Livingston, National Education Leader with the Australian Children's Education and Care Quality Authority. I'd like to welcome you and your team to this session on Quality Area 1, recorded in Sydney on Gadigal land. This session focuses on Quality Area 1 of the National Quality Standard, Education Program and Practice. On your screen, you'll see an agenda of what we'll be working through today. We aim to give you some tips on getting your team prepared to run your own internal workshop, identify some possible learning outcomes, work through four workshop templates and establish some future actions for your team. This session is ideal to support those who attended the live workshops or those who couldn't make the workshops and would like an insight into the structure and resources. In 2014 and 2015, ASEQA worked collaboratively with regulatory authorities and the professional support coordinators in states and territories to deliver 60 workshops in locations across Australia. I know most of you are familiar with the role of ASEQA and our work, but it's probably worth reiterating our mission. To lead and monitor the consistent effective and efficient implementation of the National Quality Framework to improve the quality of education and care leading to improved outcomes for children. That means working with the sector to ensure that services across the country develop the same understanding of the requirements of the National Quality Framework and that services are assessed and rated in a way that is consistent regardless of their type and location. Another significant part of our work is to inform and educate the sector and the broader community about the importance of quality early education and care. The National Quality Agenda Information Technology System, the NQAITS, includes data from states and territories relating to assessment and rating. On a quarterly basis, Data is drawn from the NQAITS for inclusion in a report called the NQF Snapshot, which is available on the ASEQA website. If you haven't accessed the Snapshot, it is a useful resource that provides information about how services are performing in the assessment and rating process. When I look at the most recent data from the Snapshot, it is evident that some educators find Quality Area 1 the most challenging. The standard that some educators find most challenging is Standard 1.2, which relates to educators and coordinators being focused, active and reflective. At an element level, educators have difficulty with Element 1.2.1, the element relating to the cycle of planning, and also Element 1.2.3, the element relating to reflective practice. I also note in Quality Area 7, Leadership and Service Management, it is often element 7.2.2, the element relating to educators and coordinators having an individual development plan that services are least likely to meet. This data has informed the structure of this workshop, which will focus on Quality Area 1, but also assist educators and coordinators to meet element 7.2.2, the element relating to individual development plans. Now, let's start to prepare for the session. Firstly, pick a time that suits you and the members of your team. We will give you opportunities to pause the presentation and discuss the templates as we go through them. Find a space that is comfortable and relaxed. Ensure everyone has access to refreshments and room to type or write. You may want to ask participants to turn off their mobile phones. If you haven't printed your required resources already, you can access these in the folder located at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. On the inside cover of the workbook, you'll see the learning outcomes, principles and practices of both the belonging, being and becoming Early Years Learning Framework and the My Time Our Place Framework for School Age Care. 
The workbook also contains a glossary of terms and maps key concepts across the frameworks. The supporting resources are a mix of handy support materials such as the planning cycles for both the Early Years Learning Framework and the Framework for School Age Care, a documentation fact sheet from the ASEQA website and an educational program and practice self-assessment. ASEQA has created a great video resource to support this session called Developing the Frameworks which is available on the ASEQA website. This is a discussion with Dr Jennifer Cartmill and Professor Jennifer Sumpsian on the development of the approved learning frameworks. This is a great way to understand the background of these frameworks. So, if you're ready, let's get started. In this session, we're going to look at Quality Area 1, which is made up of Standard 1.1 and Standard 1.2. The Guide to the National Quality Standard, which is available on the ASEQA website, unpacks each of the elements and provides examples of what an authorised officer may observe, discuss and cite in terms of documentation. It is important to remember that the guide is not intended to be a checklist, but rather to paint a picture about what practice might look like at the meeting national quality standard level. There are a number of valuable online resources available to assist you to understand and implement the national quality standard and underpinning regulatory standards. Please access the ASEQA website for frequently asked questions and resources to support you in your learning journey. We often get asked if there's a recipe or a template for documentation. In fact, I think a strength of the National Quality Standard is that it's not prescriptive about how you meet the standards relating to documentation. It recognises the professionalism of the sector to determine the best way to meet the standards, taking into consideration your service context your children, your families, your community, your educators, your management committee or approved provider. Think outside the square in terms of the best ways to make children's learning visible. Here are some examples of the many, many ways to document children's learning. The Early Childhood Australia website also has a range of relevant and useful resources. For example, you may be interested to view the e-newsletters that unpack topics such as the example on screen that relates to documentation. Now it's time to open your workbooks. As you can see from the inside cover, the two nationally approved learning frameworks are, for children under school age, the Belonging, Being and Becoming Early Years Learning Framework and, for older children, the My Time, Our Place Framework for School Age Care. For additional information about approved frameworks in the Australian Capital Territory, Victoria, Tasmania and Western Australia, please refer to the Education and Care Services National Regulations. Template 1 focuses on Standard 1.1 that's the standard that relates to implementing an approved learning framework which informs the development of a curriculum that enhances each child's learning and development. In this section, we would like you to prioritise one of the elements and unpack what you do to meet the element. What would you like the authorised officer to observe? What would you like to discuss with them? Then, Think about what documentation you would show to support these observations and discussions. As an example, we have drafted a possible response on screen now. There are many ways you may want to tackle this exercise. For example, you may want to talk through each element as a group. Alternatively, you could allocate individual elements to educators to complete and then come together as a group to discuss. The Guide to the National Quality Standard offers some insights into what authorised officers may be seeking to observe, discuss and cite. To reiterate, however, it is important to remember these are just examples. 
it is not intended to be a checklist. Pause this now, review the example on screen and give it a go. Now that you've had a go at template 1, as a group or individually, let's give template 2 a go. This template concentrates on standard 1.2. That's the standard relating to educators and coordinators being focused, active and reflective in designing and delivering the program for each child. Again, in this section we would like you to prioritise one of the elements and unpack what you would like the authorised officer to observe and what you would like to discuss with them. Then, look at what documentation you would show to support these observations and discussions. As an example, we have drafted a possible response to an element on the screen now. Pause now and fill in your workbook. By working through the templates, you may have identified strengths in terms of how educators are meeting the elements and standards. It's also important to identify any gaps in your service delivery and note these down as possible actions for you and your team to work on. Next we are moving to template 3 which draws from the self-assessment tool developed by the Professional Support Coordinators Alliance. Take a look at the tasks in this template. You may choose to undertake these collaboratively or individually. This template will assist you to identify professional learning needs at your service. Take a few moments to rate your service against the list of statements using the following levels. Level 1. Aspiring. We want to be able to do this in the future. Level 2. Evolving. We have some capability but need more. Level 3. Capable. We have confidently been doing this. Level 4. Confident. We do this consistently to best practice. Be open and honest in your assessment and remember this is a tool to assist you to enhance practice. Pause now and take a look at the sample we have on screen. Finally we have template 4, your professional learning plan. This links with element 7.2.2. That's the element that relates to educators, coordinators and staff members having an individual development plan in place to support performance improvement. For example, when choosing a professional development opportunity, think about whether the opportunity allows educators to question their own views or is it simply just to validate them? Does it allow them to think critically about values and assumptions? Does it provide information and knowledge about alternative practices and perspectives? And does it give educators opportunities to investigate real life examples in their own setting? On page 13 of the workbook, you'll find a range of professional learning opportunities outlined. Think creatively about how you might meet your professional learning needs. Think about using the resources available. Why not visit another service? Or what about participating in an action research project? An example of an area for focus, critical reflection, is provided on your screen now. Take a look and consider what would be suitable for you and your team. Now that you have completed the four templates, you should have some rich examples to include in your individual development plan and if you have one, your services learning and development plan. Think about actions that will enhance your practice and work with children and families. Take the time to identify one or two actions to prioritise. Look back over the templates to identify where your strengths and areas for improvement are. Remember you can always revisit these templates and complete all of the elements in each standard. Using these templates and resources is a great way to engage and empower educators in your service's continual quality improvement. Please check the ASEQA website for regular workshop updates, 
latest snapshot data and helpful articles on the National Education Leader webpage. Thanks again for taking the time to view this video and best wishes in your important work delivering quality education and care for children and their families.